Hey, what is up everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we are going to be exploring one of Arizona's most beloved gems, so make sure you watch until the very end as I'll be giving you sneak peeks as to what you can expect to see along the way, all while providing information such as parking, permits, and vehicle requirements to make it out here. So CBQ Falls is not hard to find if you Google it, but if you do decide to go, here's a few things that you'll need to know. The first thing that you're going to need to know is you will need a permit to hike out here as it is on a reservation. Permits are $30 per person and you can purchase them at the Sinclair gas station, which is located about 30 miles northeast from the turnoff to CBQ Falls, just off of Highway 77. I'll post a link in the description below for that gas station. I also read online that you can purchase permits there at a pink canopy, which is located just right after the turnoff for CBQ Falls, but when I stopped to take a look, there was nothing there, so don't rely on that. You can also purchase permits online as well, and I'll post the link in the description below. Good morning, we just made it to the parking area for CBQ Falls. I had to park just before the creek because I don't have 4x4, but if you do have 4x4, you can cross the creek over there and then park over there. So we're going to get going on this hike and check out this waterfall. Let's go! Next thing you'll need to know is, and this is a very popular question, do you need a 4x4 vehicle to make it out there? Well the answer is mostly no, I'll explain. If you do have a 4x4 or a high clearance vehicle, then great, you'll get out there quicker, as it is a mildly rough 4 mile dirt road from the turnoff to the parking area. Now I did make it out there just fine in my Hyundai Accent. Yes I said it, Hyundai Accent. Now the next thing you'll need to know is where to park. So if you do have a high clearance vehicle, you can definitely drive across the creek here and park anywhere you want right here, which is also where you'll see signs for the trailhead. Now if you do have a vehicle like mine that's not high clearance, no worries, you can park anywhere you want right here. Just also keep in mind that this is on a reservation and it's a privilege to be able to hike out here. So please be respectful, which means no littering. You're on a hike, not slamming beers at a frat party. So pack it in, pack it out. Now, let's make our way to the falls. All right, so we've been on the trail for a couple minutes now. We're not even to the waterfall yet and already the views are spectacular. We got a lot of little waterfalls along the way. We're at the very bottom of the Salt River Canyon and the views are just impeccable. So it is about a mile and a half hike from the trailhead to the actual falls themselves. So plan on a round trip of three miles. And the entire way there, you're gonna be surrounded by towering canyon walls. I'm not kidding. The entire hike, the views are just so mesmerizing. Definitely a sight for sore eyes. There were so many times I just had to pull out my phone and capture what I was seeing, especially on the drive to the trailhead itself. Just, oh man, it feels like you're on another planet. The views out there are some of the best in Arizona. And it is also a good idea to make sure that whatever shoes or hiking boots that you're wearing, you don't mind them getting wet because your feet will get wet. It's inevitable. Now, you won't have to go swimming and you won't get drenched to get out there, but there are gonna be multiple times when you will have to cross the creek. And sure, you might be able to play hopscotch on the rocks and kind of, you know, not get wet for a while, but there will be times when you're gonna have to walk through the water. But no worries, it's not that deep. And hey, it's all part of the adventure. So it is about mid-November, and if you're gonna come hiking here around mid-November, I would definitely recommend bringing a long sleeve shirt or a sweatshirt because at the start of the trailhead, it was pretty warm, but back here where the sun just does not hit anything, it's definitely cooled off a little bit, and I could even see my breath a couple times. So we've probably been at CBQ Falls for about an hour now. I haven't seen anybody else out here, and I didn't see any cars on the way in either, so it's kind of cool when you have the entire place to yourself. You can just do whatever you want, not have to worry about other people. I will say though, I stepped in the water up there and I just want to say, I can't even imagine how Jack felt toward the end of Titanic.
Alright everybody, that's about all the time we have for on today's adventure. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you out in some way, then definitely let me know by smashing that like button. I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks for tagging along on the adventure to CBQ Falls. I hope you all had fun. And hey, consider subscribing if you're into adventuring. We definitely explore our fair share of Arizona on this channel and all the treasures it beholds. Be sure to click the next video as it will also showcase more stunning views from the Salt River Canyon. Until next time, we'll see you guys later. Take care.